All right, so next step is paint selection. I struggled a lot when I first started doing this on what to use, did a lot of research. Shout out to Steven Sanford. Saved me a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of headaches. This is what I started using at first, Rust-Oleum. Now people say you gotta use oil-based paints. How about that? Get yourself some Bear Dynasty. Cheaper, better in every way, lasts forever. That I've had for six months and it's already dried up in the can, can't use it. Garbage, ruins your brushes. Um, another big thing too is color, okay? You get these colors that you can never get in oil-based, like your yellows, your reds, um, we'll get into a little bit more of this later, but your browns that you use on your hens, big deal because you can't find those in oil-based paints to begin with. Uh, so yeah, Bear Dynasty, and then for the bottoms, I touched on a little bit earlier, I get these on the discount rack. Home Depot always has like a discount shelf. If you look around the paint section, 50 cents, a dollar, two dollars, this is what I use on the bottom. Bear Ultra, lasts forever, cheap, good stuff. You don't gotta go crazy on the bottoms and use the expensive stuff. All right, so what you see here, this is one that's ready for paint. I did the bottom. We didn't film it because it's pretty straightforward and uh, anybody that's gonna paint one of these should know the basics on that. It's just literally going over the wrestle coat, what I'm gonna do on the back. But I wanna show you a little bit of the brush I like to use. It's just a round brush. I find it's a little bit easier. It holds a lot of paint when you're doing a big body like this in big surface areas. It really holds a lot of paint. It gets it done quick and easy. Um, the biggest thing I noticed is starting with your light colors first. So if you're gonna, this is gonna be a canvas back. You wanna use white on the back, and I'm gonna show you at the end how I leave the lines. That's a general area where I'm gonna start with the black, and I'm gonna use the black on the chest and the tail, and it'll cover up that white real nice. So the beauty of this brown brush, you see all those little spots right there. I already went over it once, but I wasn't pushing crazy hard. I was just trying to spread the paint, but you could just roll this brush. And I like to just do a circular motion. You could really just work that paint in. And it's just gonna cover all that, getting all the little grit of that wrestle coat where, you know, some of the cheaper, lighter brush, like a lot of guys use a chip brush for this. Cheap dollar chip brush. And that's what I was using at first, but I spent a little extra money on this thing and I'm never looking back. Because the chip brush will just float that paint on the surface and they're going to be knocking a lot of paint off when these things bounce off the side of a boat. You know, my friend behind the camera likes to do that a lot. Stop the cap. All right, so we skipped through a little bit just so we're not boring you, but it's the same thing all around. I just want to show you where I leave off so you guys know where to start up again. Um, generally speaking, when you're painting a diver like this, you're going to have... A black chest, black tail, white, gray, gray body, sides, top. So I'll come in with the white, very light on the brush. You don't want to do too much. Got that much paint. And all I do is dap it a little bit on both sides. And this is going to give me a nice line, well, reference line to where I come in with the black. And you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to worry about getting a nice clean line here because you're going to go right over with the black. And you're going to make your line with your black, which we're going to show you in the next video. But it's kind of what you're shooting for. Do it nice and even on both sides. That's what you're looking for on the chest. And on the back here, see that? That's pretty much perfect the way I like to do it. Do a nice little rounded, rounded side. And like I said, you don't have to be perfect because you're, you're covering that with black. And you're going to make your line with the black, which we're going to show you later. The white is dry somewhat. It's still a little tacky. Some guys that are really like professional at this, we're making gunning decoys. We're not doing collector's decoys. If this is for the shelf, then yeah. But some guys will take it while it's wet and then they'll blend it in so you get a nice transition between the black and the white. Like I said, these are gunning decoys. We're not worried about that. So I'm just gonna come right in here with the black. Get about that much on your brush. Just be very careful. You don't want this to run into the white. Apply that on there. Start working it in. This is probably the most technical part about this whole thing. Just because you could run into issues if it runs. 
and then when you meet that line right there, I'm a little OCD like I said, so I like them to be even on both sides. But for right now, you're just getting it on there, get it worked in until you get to your edges. Get it all covered. I like to do a circular motion, pushing that paint in every little crack possible. We'll come up here, we'll do where the head's gonna sit. It's not crucial, but I like it covered. You're probably gonna have to re-dip the brush before you start getting into the technical stuff. So we're gonna get a little more paint on the brush. I just dip a corner. Get about that much on there right there. Come right in here and I just dab it. Just dab it. Because you don't want that to run. Dab it here. I'll kind of clean my brush out on this side. Just so when it comes to this, because this is where you're gonna get a little technical. So come into here and just start dragging it. See how it's getting that nice line, clean your brush out again, come back down. And you'll get a feel for it when you got too much paint or not enough paint on the brush. That's kind of like the perfect amount you want right there. You see you just got that nice line and then the black just covers up that white perfect. So you got that nice clean line there. That'll help me sleep at night. And you're ready to start on your other side. You're gonna do the same thing. I come in with just a little dab, maybe even a little less. Finish working that last little bit right there. Then you could just start your line. I might need a little more paint. Oh, I got plenty. Just see how you just push it out of the brush. And that's pretty much it right there. It's somewhat even when you look at it from the top. The dog ain't gonna know the difference. If it does, it's too close, you should be shooting it anyway. But that's good for me, and I'm pretty OCD, like I said a thousand times. So on the back, I'll be honest with you, it's my first time painting this style body but I'm gonna do it the way I do all my other ones. I come in with just a little like one inch. I wouldn't call this a finesse brush, but it's a lot easier to get cleaner lines than if you're using the round brush. And I'm just gonna start doing a little cut. That's probably way too much paint, but we'll work with it. Come around here, you're gonna start. Ducks have that really like defined, rounded, that's where like their wing pocket would sit. So I'll just do a nice, rounded section there. Come back around with it. Nothing too spectacular. Just want it a little round. That's your side pocket where the wing would be. Just gonna mimic the same thing on the other side. Come back in with the round brush. We'll just hit this for now. Get all that covered. I don't claim to be Picasso here either. I just started doing this one day and pick things up as you go along. I'm not an expert by any means. And every duck is going to be different. If you look at ducks in the wild, no two are ever the same. So it's okay for them to be a little different. You know, like this one's going to have... This one's going to have probably a V on its back. Some might have a U shape. Some might have a squared shape. It is what it is. I kind of like that right there. So that's what I'm gonna go with. I think that looks pretty nice. And you're just gonna do all around the tail. Got enough in there where you can just work it in. So I'm just back to my little one inch brush. Rounding out the wing pocket. 
doing the best I can to just keep it symmetrical. See, I need to go up a little bit more. That's why I really like to start with the white and then go to the black. There's a lot of room for error. And then you can fix it. It's starting to look pretty good. Looks good to me. Might be a few little things I'll fix later. That's the beauty of this too. You could always come back to it. You don't have to do it all right here. If there's something you don't like later, just come back and fix it. Now I'm going to do the other side. Give your decoy a quick once over. Make sure there's no spots you missed. That looks good to me. So for the next stuff, I'm gonna show you guys what they call a dry brush technique. Um, again, very amateur at this, novice at best. There's basically no paint on this brush, but I'm gonna take a paper towel, knock off the bulk of it. You don't, you do not want a lot of paint on this brush. And you're just going to lightly, very lightly, go over the back. It's called shading. You don't have to do this again. You can kill plenty of ducks over this decoy right here. Just the way it is. But these birds do have a little bit of a darker back, if you look at them. So, I'm going to keep it as realistic as possible. That's just going to add a little bit of shading to the back. The wrestle coat makes it real easy to do this. Be careful not to get on your edges because they're still wet. You'll drag more paint on there, and you don't want that. Very lightly. Don't hit this hard. I like to even go the extra step. I'll take just a little bit of paint on the brush, dab it on my paper towel here, and they have almost like a, what's a good word for it, like a cheetah pattern almost on their back. Um, so I'll just I'll do random daps where it's just a little bit darker and tiny a little more paint, but it's just going to be a little bit darker because they got that little breakup on their back. You don't have to do that. So that's a little more realism. Makes me happy, so I do it.